Wireless security, an overview. In general, wireless networks are always going to be less secure than wired networks. This is because all network information is being broadcast through the open air. That means that anyone with a good antenna can listen in. This is why you should always use encryption on all Wi-Fi. But remember, encrypted data can still be vulnerable to attack. Determined hackers have ways to get through most wireless security systems. All wireless networks broadcast an SSID. This is the name of your home network. It's broadcast in plain text, and this is the thing you see when you connect to a network at a new location. That's what windows will pop up for you to click on and connect to. You can disable this, but that's generally not effective, because the name still has to be included in the data packet somewhere so that your computer can connect to a router. Programs such as NetStumbler or Insider can easily read even SSIDs that are turned off. Insider is an open source program. It's free at metageek.net. Just click on Downloads at the top. And choose Insider as the project. What it does is to detect all signals within your area. It can even detect signals that are well below connecting to and the ones that Windows completely ignores. This is a tool that is used by many hackers to d find networks they can connect to. WEP or Wired Equivalent Privacy was the first encryption developed by the IEEE. It was developed along with the protocols that are used in all wireless networking. At this time, the government limited the amount of encryption that was available to the private consumer to 64-bit encryption. It sounds like a lot, but it turned out to not be enough. Nowadays, WEP can be cracked easily by monitoring traffic. This is because the initialization for the security packets is sent in plain text, and the same security key is used repeatedly. If you listen to enough data, capture enough packets, you can find packets that use the same security key and that gives you a starting place for decryption. The IEEE, the people who invented WEP, declared it to be useless in the year 2004. However, all wire wireless routers and cards still support WEP for legacy reasons. WPA and WPA2 are the next level of security. They were developed in response to the WEP failures. WPA is 128-bit encryption that uses the TKIP system, which basically uses a longer key and a key that rotates and changes constantly as the data is being sent. There is no duplication of the key in more than one packet. WPA2 uses many of the same processes, but it uses a 256-bit encryption. It's based on the AES block cipher, which is much stronger than the stream ciphers used in the original WPA. It too is nearly impossible to brute force. However, WPA and WPA2 still have problems. Small packets can be used to bypass the key. ARP and PING packets are very small and they send the same data over and over again. But people are able to isolate the key out of the small packets and then use it to get around security. Weak passwords are still an issue. You can't brute force your way through a strong password, but you can do a dictionary attack just as easily on WPA as you can on WEP. Another problem is that the SSID is used to salt the encryption. Since most people use default settings for their SSID, this allows people to pre-hash large lists of passwords using the top 1000 SSID names. This makes it easier for hackers to attack your system because they don't have to do the calculations to hack. They just have to go through a table of pre-calculated passwords. And there is a lot of cracking software available. One of the most famous programs is actually an entire suite of programs. It's called Backtrack. It is an open source Linux distro that is available from backtracklinux.org. It is basically a collection of network analysis tools, which can also be used as 
network attacking tools. One of the most well-known cracking programs is aircrack-ng. This is a Linux-based program that is bundled with Backtrack and can be used on any other Linux distro. It can be used to easily crack WEP and WPA networks that don't use strong passwords. Another program in development is called Aircrack on Steroids. This is a Windows-based system, which is much more user-friendly and has a large database of prehashed keys, so that the calculation does not have to be done on the hacker's computer. They merely download the keys from the internet and access your system. Many people believe that their Wi-Fi is secure because they are geographically isolated. Technically, a router is not supposed to broadcast more than 300 feet. However, many people use antenna extenders to boost that range up to thousands of feet or even miles away from the original source. These antenna extenders are used by war drivers, who are basically hackers that patrol neighborhoods looking for broadcasting Wi-Fi signals. One such antenna is the Cantana. It is made out of a, a large juice can and a USB Wi-Fi card. It's very cheap, it's easy to make, and it is a strong directional antenna, allowing you to focus in on specific broadcasting networks. Another antenna that is very popular is the Backwad. It has a wider reception, and it's very easily hidden. It's about five inches square and maybe an inch and a half tall. Many times these will be mounted onto an old satellite dish. People using this system have successfully connected to networks that were miles away under the right condition. Another unique antenna is called the Wok 5. This is basically a Chinese cooking wok with one of many types of antennas mounted in the center. It basically makes it a homemade satellite dish. Using this type of antenna, people have connected to networks that are over 10 miles away. Now this isn't likely in most areas due to line of sight issues and geographical obstructions. However, it is amazing that using a simple and cheap piece of hardware such as this, people have boosted their connections from a few hundred feet to over 10 miles. The end.